The Patriots' defense is off to a historically poor start. In their first four weeks, they were dead last in yards per drive and second to last in points per drive. According to 538, they've allowed the most expected points added by any defense of the last decade. In Week 5, they played a bit better against the Bucks, but they are far from the team we saw last year. For this video, I wanted to see what exactly was going on, so I went through the film and looked for common trends from these games. The first, and honestly one of the biggest issues I saw on tape, was their poor run defense on first downs. As a team, the Patriots are allowing 5 yards per carry overall. This is bottom 5 in the entire league. If you look closely, much of their problem happens on first down where they are allowing 6 yards per carry. This means they are allowing offenses those easy second and short situations on a regular basis. If you look at the average and also factor in the standard deviation, the defense is allowing a 6 yard to 14 yard run roughly every third carry. When I went through the film, it's not a specific scheme that's giving them issues. They are struggling against power, they are struggling against gap, and they are also struggling against zone as well. Here's an example in the first quarter of the Patriots Chiefs game. Kareem Hunt took an outside zone handoff to the right. Number 98 Trey Flowers is responsible for the backside B gap. The left tackle on the play executes a cut block and even though Flowers does a good job of staying on his feet, he gets rooted out of his gap and allows a cutback lane. This is why Hunt was able to take this carry into the second level. Going further, the amount of total movement the center and the backside guard were able to create on the nose tackle, Allen Branch, is also a big reason why this play was so successful. In outside zone, the offense is essentially just trying to create creases and this movement is an easy way for them to do that. On their next first down a few minutes later, the Patriots only have 7 guys in the box versus the Chiefs 12 personnel. Before the snap even begins, I already see a mismatch just purely from alignment. I currently see 8 gaps on the field between the offensive line and the tight ends and I only see 7 defenders to fill them. Simply by a numbers game, the Patriots front is already outnumbered. Worse, the mismatch doesn't occur backside. It occurs right in the center of the play between the guards. In this play, the Chiefs run another outside zone to the right. Kyle Van Noy is tasked with the impossible. He has to guard two gaps. So what does he do? He goes backside since he thinks Allen Branch might be able to collapse the block by the right guard. Unfortunately for the Patriots, the center mauls Branch to the ground and then walls off Van Noy for the big gain. In week two, the Patriots did a much better job on first down versus the Saints. Instead of allowing the ridiculous 10 yards per carry, they only allowed just over 3 yards per carry in first downs. Week 3 versus Houston was largely the same, but the Panthers and Buccaneers in weeks 4 and 5 respectively were both back in the 5.5 to 6 yards per carry range on first downs. This is important because if a team can't stop the run on first down, it gives the offense the opportunity to set up play action later in the game. It also opens the entire playbook for an offense on second downs as they can call whatever they want including deep shots as they aren't under any pressure to stay conservative. From my point of view, Lawrence Guy and Malcolm Brown need to play better up front in order to stop these plays. Neither are bad per se, but them and definitely Allen Branch included are way underperforming. Beyond these guys, Kyle Van Noy is one of the bigger problems for this team. In 5 games of tracking, I did not give him a single positive grade against the run. While run defense is typically not the sexiest of topics, the relative lack of tackle for losses is absolutely astounding. They have a total of 3 TFLs all season which is just awful. The best run defenders in the NFL average over one of these per game. The Patriots, on the other hand, are averaging roughly half of one for the entire defense per game. Moving on to pass coverage, the Patriots defense is dead last in yards per attempt allowing almost 9 yards per throw. An average defense allows roughly 7 yards per attempt, while the best in the NFL like the Steelers and the Bengals average roughly 5.5. This disparity is caused by a lot of miscommunications, busted assignments, and generally average to poor play from everybody in the secondary. They also have allowed the second most 20 plus yard passing plays with only the Colts defense allowing more. In this play, the Patriots are playing cover 2 with 2 deep safeties. Tyreek Hill runs an out and up and attacks a deep right sideline. 
Devin McCourty is supposed to be responsible for the deep half, and he completely gets pulled inside. From the broadcast views, a lot of people saw this live and instantly blamed this on Gilmore, but this isn't his fault. Honestly, he actually had a really good game versus the Chiefs, where he only allowed one catch for four yards. The frustrating part is the level of inconsistency I saw on the field. If Gilmore played well, Butler was awful. If Gilmore was good, Rose sucked. And if Rose sucked, somebody else stepped up. As a coach, this is very hard to plan for. In this play, the Saints line up in shotgun with the trips bunch to the right. The Patriots are playing man, and they decide not to switch assignments against this defense. This means that the cornerbacks are responsible for the man directly in front of them. The Saints realize this and call the perfect play to defeat this coverage. They run a wheel behind a clear out and then use a crosser over the middle of the field. Gilmore gets shoved to the ground, then Eric Rowe gets caught in no man's land thinking he has made some sort of mistake in his assignment. He sees the crosser wide open, and then he sees Brandon Coleman, who he was supposed to cover, running down the sideline. This was a clear busted coverage if I've ever seen one. Now this play happened on third and nine, and honestly, their ability to stop third down conversions is roughly average compared to the other teams in the NFL. Many defenses tend to struggle with this, but this really isn't their big issue. It's more or less those big shot plays that we've already started talking about. Moving on to the next week, the Patriots played the Panthers in week three. The Patriots allowed five 20 plus yard plays and many of them were directly the result of simple assignment errors. Here, the Patriots are playing man coverage and the Panthers use a four by one formation to isolate Kelvin Benjamin. It's clear that Gilmore thought Eric Rowe was covering him while I believe it was supposed to be Gilmore's assignment from the beginning. This is why he's wide open on the left side of the field. Some other pass coverage issues happen when any team introduced window dressings or misdirection, it completely fooled this defense. They are caught in this play with their pants completely down and this backside screen went for a touchdown. Looking at the pre snap footage, it's clear there is some level of communication error between Gilmore and Dev McCourty while nobody tracks the running back. Both players sprint in the opposite direction, which gives Ed Dixon a free release to block down the field. In my opinion, there just seems to be a general lack of understanding between these players. I honestly feel like the transition from Logan Ryan to Stephon Gilmore is playing a pretty big role in the secondary. Also, it doesn't help that Hightower has been injured, and he really hasn't looked the best even when he's on the field. Beyond him, some of the other players are simply not performing up to their abilities. I am mainly referring to Malcolm Butler, who should be a top-tier cornerback. However, him, Gilmore, and McCourty, who are all highly respected players, are playing average at best and to make matters worse are extremely inconsistent. In this play, the Patriots are up by 9 points with roughly 10 minutes left in the game. It's 3rd and 2, and the Bucks have trips bunch to the right with the Sean Jackson split to the left. The Patriots are playing cover 1 with man coverage across the board. Malcolm Butler lines up with a 10-yard split between himself and Jackson when all the Bucks need is 2 yards. They have plenty of time on the clock, and his goal here has to be to stop the short throw and force Winston to try a deeper pass. So, what do the Bucks do, of course? They run a quick slant, and Winston gets the easiest first down in the game. Additionally, Jackson takes advantage of his free release, and he gains 40 yards on the play. Now, of course, in Tampa Bay fashion, Nick Folk missed the field goal, but still, the point definitely stands, and this is honestly some of the worst situational awareness that I've seen from players that have to know better. Just like Butler, Gilmore has been pretty much average this season. He is allowing roughly one yard per cover snap, and with his monster $65 million contract, he has to step up. Moving on, the Patriots' pass rush is relatively average. Trey Flowers has been decent, while Dietrich Weiss is definitely performing way above expectations. Cassius Marsh, who the Patriots traded for a week before the season started, was always more of a situational player with the Seahawks. He has played like a great backup, but probably shouldn't be featured or asked to cover any running backs in space. In general, I don't think the pass rush is hurting them, but it's still not making up for the poor play in the secondary. Overall, I believe it's a combination of factors that is affecting this team. Run defense on first downs, clear miscommunications in the secondary, all while other players are not stepping up. You combo these factors and add in the huge amount of inconsistency, and this is what you get. 
I mean, how do you coach a player who dominates in one week and then looks like absolute trash in the following? It's a very difficult problem to fix. Moving forward, if the Patriots can fix the communication errors that I saw on tape, especially in man coverage, the defense will definitely improve. They clearly have talent, but at an individual level, they need to consistently perform better. Until they do, this will be their downfall, and their offense can only carry them so far. Well, that's all I have in this one. Just like in the last two weeks, BetDSI.com has a special promotion for any viewer of this channel. If you use promotion code BREAK25, you can get a free $25 bet on any game you're choosing. This week, I will be using my $25 on the Buccaneers. They played the Patriots last week, and they are currently a 1.5 point favorite over the Cardinals. With Arizona's offensive line struggles, and a secondary that has been underperforming, I feel like the Bucs have the advantage. Jameis Winston, Mike Evans, and Deshaun Jackson should be able to create big plays in this offense. Again, this bet is completely free as long as you use promotion code BREAK25. As a side note, since one of my quarterbacks in fantasy is on his bye week, I'm planning on starting Josh McCown. The Jets face the Patriots, and all I need is a couple of big plays for him to be worth it. Based on my film study, I think that can happen. If you enjoyed this breakdown, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you want to support my videos or suggest a topic for me to look at, click on the link to my Patreon account. Any amount is seriously appreciated, and this video was actually chosen by somebody that donated. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.